similar to me, they just want to not even leave anything behind and just be forgotten again. Because I thought that if I didn't go back then, I would look back at that time and regret it my whole life. So... Watch out of there, it's Fake God looking to go big knot under the tower. Dignitas are going to find oh! the skill. Surely there's a massive knot. Fires three into the wall. Empress of Art scoops them back in. Dignitas. At the end of 2021, you left Dignitas and you put out a post saying that you were retiring and you kind of expressed a lot of the emotions that uh, you were going through. Uh, walk us through, you know, coming to that decision and then deciding to play again, going through challengers and then winning. Well, it was actually a little different. Uh, when I first left Dig, it was like after a bad split, basically. And I was in the off season, I was basically thinking like, okay, I'll probably just get kicked from this because I didn't like, I played like super badly and I wasn't in a good condition. So when like I got the message that I was kicked, I kind of like expected it. And after that, like I just planned on retiring essentially and going back to college. And, but the post I made after that was more so, um, when I was deciding to retire, like right afterwards, I didn't want to like make a big post about it or anything. I just wanted to like do it quietly and just leave like how so many other people did. Because there's a lot of people, other players in the past who just uh, left the scene completely after, afterwards and just disappeared completely. Because they, I would assume like, similar to me, they just want to not even leave anything behind and just be forgotten again because of the bad memories they would have had that led up to their decision to retire. For me, like when I was actually in college after like four months of waiting in the downtime, I realized that I wanted to try again and I didn't want to just leave the scene like this and like leave quietly and just disappear like that so suddenly. So honestly, my post was like, it was like way too long, honestly, but the main goal of it was uh, to not be completely forgotten by people because to like be back in the scene, I would need to be remembered, right? Like if mm -hmm. I was trying to play again and I didn't like make a big random post like that, people would just forget that I was like existing, you know? They would just be like, oh, fake God, I, I heard that name like years ago. Is he even playing? Like they, they wouldn't know. I probably should have made it more clear in that post. It was just like, it was like a bunch of random thoughts and stuff I had and then I, I went through some iterations because I was like, I got to like explain the backstory of like that I actually did try to retire, but I wasn't and I want to try to get back, but it was super long. But yeah, I think my explanation was super long there too, but I hope you got the gist of it. You can ask me if you were uh, a little confused of what I just said then. No, no, that that made sense. So then you decided to, that you didn't want to quit. Is that because you missed the competitiveness? Is that because maybe you kind of thought that you weren't given a good chance like obviously you talked about how you didn't feel the greatest you felt directionless you felt lost like it was very stressful on you um so why would you want to go back for me i just thought that if i didn't go back then i would look back at that time and regret it my whole life so i wanted to make sure that i didn't leave with regrets and i wanted to try to go back and play if i could and then make sure that I really give it my all, essentially. And then yeah. and then maybe afterwards I could leave without regrets. Something like that. It was a, it was an interesting time when I was like, it was so weird because when I was there, like my first day at, a, at an apartment I rented, I felt so off. I felt like I was making a huge mistake. <laughs> and I felt like that for like a week afterwards. And I, I actually went to like the college, like, I was walking there and it's like, oh my god, this is so wrong. Something feels so off. It was, uh, it was very interesting. Did you have anyone that you were talking with, whether it's like family or friends or like pros that you sort of like ran your thoughts by or was this something you came and decided on your own? Uh, I talked with like a couple people. I mostly, I would say like I talked with my parents, mostly my mom because of uh, a thing that like my mindset was beforehand, like before my first years of playing was that I would I would play league and then if it didn't work out, I would go back to college. But I, that was mostly for my mom, right? Because she's like, we're, it's an Asian family. She wants me to like have a 
stable, good life, like all Asian parents, you probably, it's probably very common at this point, but, uh, but it kind of like worked against me because it made me think that I have to like perform exceptionally well and like make results happen. Otherwise I'll like go back to college as like a failure, you know? And, uh, the thing that changed for me now is like, I'm not as worried about that. Like, I'm not worried as like, okay, I'll like, I'll perform. I need to perform well or else like I have to go back because like, because I failed, you know, like I, I'm not first place or anything at this point. And I think my mom knows that as well. So my mindset right now has changed to just, just do your best, see what happens. And then if, you know, if, if you don't like have more opportunities or like you don't know what to do and you're not sure about league anymore, you can just go back and you always have more decisions to make. So that relieved a lot of pressure for me, for my parents too. So and then I also you... talked oh, sorry, with, oh, sorry, sorry, that's fine. No, no, I, I also talked with, yeah, I also talked like with uh, one of my friends I made while playing. Uh, oh. And we just talked about like, actually, <laughs> he, he was like, he, he was very surprised that I wanted to retire. And then he wasn't surprised that I wanted to come back. So I was just like, just having a lot of discussions about like pro player and like retirement as a player with him. Cause he was like, yeah, we're like both players we've our career projector has been very similar and that was uh mostly the two people i was talking to okay and how did you manage to shift your mentality from like i have to succeed um like you started your career basically you started when you got scouted um through um it wasn't called proving grounds it was called it was um, scouting grounds it was the scouting, scouting grounds, grounds. Yeah. yeah and like you were the number one uh pick and like you were quite hyped up and you kind of had like that success. And I think that also, you know, what ended up happening with you having to take someday's spot obviously put a lot of pressure on you. And can, I can see where that mentality comes from. How, how were you able to shift your mentality, especially now that you went to challengers, one, two splits, and now the pressure's on again. Like there's a lot of North American talent in the top lane, like Licorice, like Revenge, that don't have teams. And now you're on this team. How were you able to like shift despite having very similar situations? Uh, for me, my time taking a break off and after I left Dick was kind of like a real eye opener, eye opener to me because I've never actually had like a break before my first years of playing league. It's always been just playing year after year. So taking that break let me just kind of take a step back from everything related to the game and just look back at it objectively. And for me, um, just made me think about like a lot of just gave me like a lot of time to just think about everything for me it's just the the thing that I would say changed is that I shouldn't like, expect to like always be able to win everything and just I had like way too many unrealistic expectations on myself to always like be performing the best like possible like ever in the world and like winning everything as well because that's not always like, that's not even possible. Like no one has actually even done like the golden road in esports for like team games like this. There's a lot more than just the uh, individual performance. So for me, oh, I kind of forgot the question, but. <laughs> How did you change your mentality from going like um, when you back when you were on dig and felt all this pressure and kind of thinking, okay, like I always have oh, this yeah. backup. Yeah. yeah, it's similar to when I talked about the expectations of my my parents had on me basically that and the expectations that the expectations that I put on myself is that if I don't get first I'm a failure instead of that I'm more thinking like just do your best and if you actually like do your best and try everything you can to be a good teammate and like play well individually and making sure that you have a, a really good team set up together then even if you lose I don't know how you would have a uh, as many regrets as com opposed to just thinking that you must win or just lost. All right. I mean, that, that does sound like it could, um, definitely benefit is only one person wins, right? Fake, even Faker didn't win all his splits. So yeah. trying to win every split is, it can be pretty depressing if, when, if you don't succeed. Um, yeah. yeah so you, Zazel and Tomio, um, played together, uh, one, two splits together. You're sort of 
this core, you even worked with Revan before, and now this yeah. core is here on Shopify. Told me it wasn't starting, but you sort of have the same core. How does this core function? What can like um, we expect coming into the split? Uh, I would say there's not like really a synergy between me and Zazel, but I think like in terms of like maybe like the early game, right? Because it's mm -hmm. they're just so separate lanes. But there was like systems we had worked together and for DSG specifically, mm -hmm. because that was when there were a lot of rookies involved in like the jungle mid and AD carry, like because it was still Tomia. So in that case, we had a system where we helped lead the mid game, late game macro really well. In this case, I think that there's a lot more voices, so I don't have to lead that part of macro as much, especially because top lane is usually not the, the team caller. Usually they're in the side lanes, like calling out their windows instead. And then it's mostly the mid group. It's like it can involve the ADC and the jungler and support. I would say like, um, hmm. Man, I go on tangents way too much. <laughs> no, you're good. I would say, uh, I have to like take one thing. Okay, I'll just talk. I'll just talk about Sam for now. Okay, I worked with Sam before on C9C, and I thought he was a really like smart play or smart coach. And for me, like the the players, the coaches that have been foreign players are always like really have they have this certain mindset about the game, which always feels really good as a player to feel from my coach. So I was really happy that I could work with him again. I think he has like really unique ideas, and he always like knows what's correct. For the most part, like there's no, there's no like inconsistencies, I suppose, that other coaches can sometimes have. And I would say he lets the players lead things a lot more because uh, I do remember on C9C, it was a lot of uh, Zazel helping lead the reviews as well, which is still kind of what's happening now. So I think that's a, a synergy that does help for us on Shopify right now. It's like Sam can look at parts of the game from his coach player's perspective and then we kind of like try to help support the review with our own player perspective like me Zazel, uh, uh insanity and i guess turtle right now because uh b-boys is not here yet so turtle subbing for us that's really cool to hear that you um on DSG you were you had like a voice of leadership in the mid to late game. Uh it's very different from like your Dignitas and and Hunter Thieves days. So it's it's uh, as a fan it's nice seeing that you had sort of that development even if you don't have to show it now the fact that you did reach that um it it looks pretty good. Um just a couple last questions. Um What was it like winning two splits in NACL, did that make you feel like justified in your coming back? Did you think, oh, this is like just the Challengers League, it doesn't really mean much? Like, how, how did you feel competing in those splits? Honestly, I was pretty happy when we won C9C on the, the first split. But then after that, it was like, I also was just like, I wasn't as focused as winning like the second split afterwards. It was more like just the same mindset as just. I'll just try to like play well and just see what happens from then. Like not like trying to focus on the result first, just the the journey essentially, even though that sounds kinda of cheesy. So I would say like I was like super happy though that I actually won something. So it's like on C9C. Even though I technically did win, like in scouting grounds. Like afterwards, like I essentially like didn't really win anything major afterwards. So after after winning, I was like, okay, at least I had like something, you know. Like, if I decide to like retire again, I was like, at least I I won something. So I wasn't like really thinking about like the the fact that it was Challengers League. I was just uh, I was just kind of focused in the moment and then just trying to play really well. Though I would say like when we played on DSG and then we were in person for the finals, that excitement I felt the excitement again, because it was actually on stage and. We got to like play really well on stage and win again. But I still like the I still like the first time that I won. Okay. It was uh, very it was very nice. 
that's cool. Uh, hopefully you make it to the stage again this 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 year, whether it's spring or summer, and uh, yeah. I can come watch you play. Uh, last question is, um, if you could ban one item just for this, um, uh, like, patch, that's the word I'm looking for. If you could get rid of one item right now, because the items are honestly kind of busted, and I think you guys are playing on 14.1. So if you could just, like, yeah. for this patch, get rid of one item, which one would you, like, just ban? It's a hard question because those items are also items that I might use, but if I were to choose an item, is like any OP item or is it just like the item that that I just want to be banned? I mean, I, yeah, whatever you want. I would like me immediately. I would think like uh, Storm Surge. Like I just, I just hate it. Oh, it's yeah. cheap. It does so much damage. But like, what would you pick? Mm. Nah, I would ban. I would ban experimental hexplate. I think that item is so broken on some champions because, like, this gives you so much haste for your ultimate. And mm -hmm. what's happening is they just the champions that just rely on their ult, they just get this item. They have like a lot of synergy with it, like Nocturne, and then they just perma ult every time it's up, and it's so annoying <laughs> as a solo laner. So I would actually ban. I would just ban hexplate, and I All don't right. use this item too, so it's fine. It's a, it doesn't affect my role. I can still use the OP items. Awesome. Boogie might not like that because he, he, he plays a lot of Nocturne, at least from last flight. So. Yeah, that, that's his problem. He'll have to deal with it. <laughs> I'll abuse the OP out of like Sundered Sky and uh, what else there, whatever there is, Spear Shojin maybe, Black Cleaver, all that. Actually, Black Cleaver's not OP, but yeah. the other items are. All right, Zazel. Uh, not Zazel, sorry. I think <laughs> I, I heard Zazel just a second ago. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, there's, uh, a, there's, there's a lot of people in this house. Oh, okay. For, well, thanks, Fake God, so much for the interview. Um, anything else you want to oh. say to the fans? Uh, Actually, well, sorry, there are a lot of fans. There's a lot of people who watched that video of you the that I made, the Fake God, the your story. <laughs> and there's a lot of people in the comments like, I didn't even know who Fake God was, and now I'm cheering for her, uh, whether it's on cool. Twitter or YouTube. So you, you got some fans. Oh. So anything you want to say? Uh, if you're one of the fans who've kept watching me from the beginning, then thank you for still supporting me. And if you're a new fan, then just uh, thank you as well. I'll I'll just uh, be looking to play my best and hope you have fun watching me and support right. Shopify, Shopify. <laughs> and all our all our other players too. They're cool too. All right, thank you so much. Hey, yeah, thank you. I have a bunch more interviews coming up. Thank you so much to Fake God for doing this interview with me. I have more interviews with different LCS players and more specifically Shopify Rebellion content. So if you enjoyed that, please subscribe. I'm trying to hit a thousand to be able to apply to the LPP program, the league partner program. So every subscription uh, helps.